اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ایسپیرنٹس ہاو آر یو آئی ہوپ آل آف یو ویل فائن ایسپیرنٹس ٹوڈے وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ سی ایس ایس ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی جنرل سائنس اینڈ ایبلٹیز پیپر آئی ہیو سالوڈ اٹ فار یو ٹو پریپیئر دا سی ایس ایس ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی ون دس از کوشچن نمبر ٹو پارٹ اے اینڈ دا کوشچن از واٹ از ایولانچ ڈسکرائب اٹس فور ٹائپس ود فوکس آن موسٹ ڈینجرس ٹائپ دس کوشچن از ریلیٹڈ ٹو گیاری سیکٹر دیٹ انسیڈنٹ واز اوکرڈ ان ٹو تھاؤزینڈ الیون اینڈ more than 150 personnel of army and civilian personnel was died in this event so this question is related to that event so the question is what is avalanche describe its four types with focus on most dangerous type so the first point is the definition of avalanche when fresh loose snow has fallen onto a harder ice layer uh, it causes a avalanche Uh, second definition is slightest disturbance can start a slide which crash down into a valley then we will talk about types loose snow avalanche slab avalanche powder snow avalanche wet snow avalanche loose uh, snow avalanche is uh, when uh, ice uh, slightly uh, has effect on the harder ice then slab avalanche when a slab whole slab will come down and it is most dangerous then powder snow avalanche and then fourth type is wet snow avalanche and the last one we will discuss uh, that most dangerous type is slab avalanche because 90% death occurs due to this type and this slab avalanche um, has occurred in 2011 Uh, in Pakistan where one more than 150 personals was murdered next question is question number 2 part b what do you understand by global wind and pressure pattern explain wind and pressure features at higher altitude so first we will discuss global wind and pressure pattern then we will discuss its uh, wind and pressure features at high altitude the first point that would i discuss with you is the global wind pattern is also known as general circulation and the surface winds of each hemisphere are divided into three wind belts number one is polar easterlies from 60 to 90 degree as you can see in diagram i have also mentioned a diagram too second type is prevailing westerlies from 30 degree to 60 latitudes then third is tropical easterlies from 0 to 30 degree latitude and um, i have also mentioned a picture to, to understand the three types of uh, global wind and pressure pattern now we will discuss its features Uh, as you see, uh, as you see that the first point is each of these wind belt represents a cell that circulate uh, air through the atmosphere from the surface to high altitude and back again because we know that the warm air uh, goes rise up and uh, the cold air uh, goes down so the at earth's equator where solar radiation is at highest year around air near the equator is warmed and rises because it is less dense density is defined as mass per unit volume than the air around it the rising air create a circulation in which the air rises and cools at high altitude moves outward towards the poles and eventually describe back to the surface the continual heating and rise of air at the equator create low pressure there which causes air to move towards equator and take the place of the air and rises on the other hand sinking air creates high pressure at the surface where it descends the last part the last point describes the question what is the relation at high altitude now come to question number 2 part c what do you know about earthquake also explain shallow focus and deep focus earthquake this is a simple question and uh, first uh, definition uh, first i write the definition that sudden slip on a fault and the resulting ground shaking and the radiated seismic energy caused by the slip or by volcanic or magnetic activity 
or other sudden stress changes in the earth because we know that the earth surface uh, earth uh, core and uh, crust is consist of the seven tectonic plates and these tectonic plates when move uh, they produce waves and that waves is called seismic waves second definition is any sudden shaking of the ground caused by the passage of the seismic waves through the earth's rock these are the two definitions of the earthquake now we will talk about shallow focus shallow focus earthquake are commonly occurring crustal earthquake caused by the faults and the movement of the continental plates uh, second point is these are earthquakes with their focus near the surface of the earth shallow focus earthquakes are usually of large spread causing greater damage at the surface or the earth's crust these occurs quite frequently and at random however being of smaller magnitude and at least depths very often they are not even left felt nevertheless about 75% of the world's energy released from the earthquake is from the shallow focus ones now come to the deep focus deep focus earthquakes are intra plate earthquakes occur within subducting oceanic plates as they move beneath the continental plates we will discuss in next slide what is uh, the meaning of this subducting then appearing and appearing along fault lines these are earthquake with focus much deeper within the earth a deep focus earthquake occurs when two tectonic plates slides towards one another followed by subduction and what is subduction we will talk about it in next slide these are typical of the subduction zone of earth which are seismically uh, seismically active zones and the last point is they happen as a huge quakes with larger magnitude as a great deal of energy is released with the forceful collision of the plates here a subduction means uh, that uh, i have uh, um, uploaded a picture to understand uh, what is subduction means that is you can see in the picture that oceanic lithosphere and the blue color shows the ocean and that uh, on the right side there's a continental lithosphere and the inner part like tube the subduction zone is there and the uh, in the red uh, diagram you can see that the volcanic arc and the cross shows the shallow earthquakes and the circle shows deep focus earthquakes now question number 2d that is very important and um, uh, that is a question that expected in every css paper and uh, that is and it is most important question differentiate uh, between the renewable and non renewable non renewable energy sources briefly explain geothermal energy and hydroelectricity uh, first we uh, define the uh, what is uh, renewable energy sources and that is the uh, renewable energy sources are solar energy which wind energy geothermal energy biofuels uh, cultivate plants biomass air water and soil in contrast a non renewable energy source are those that are available to us in a limited quality quantities are those that are renewed so slowly that the rate at uh, which they are consumed is too fast another definition of a non renewable and renewable energy sources are the resources which cannot be exhausted even after continuous utilization are termed as renewable energy resources example of renewable energy sources are sun wind and tidal energy tidal energy can be produced by the waves of the ocean and the second uh, definition the resources which cannot be immediately replaced once they are depleted are called non renewable resources example of non renewable resources include fossil fuels such as coal petroleum and natural gas and rare minerals typically found in uh, meteorites now come to the geothermal energy geothermal energy is a heat derived within the subsurface of the earth water and or steam carry the geothermal energy to the earth's surface depending on its characteristics geothermal energy can be used for heating and cooling purpose or to be harnessed to generate clean electricity now come to the hydroelectricity hydroelectricity is a strictly made by generators that are pushed by the movement of water it is usually made with dams that block a river to make a reservoir or collect water that is pumped there when the water is released the pressure behind the dam forces the water down pipes that leads to a turbine 
this causes the turbine to run which turns a generator or which makes electricity this renewable energy method makes about one sixth of the world's electricity it produces less pollution than the fires of steam engines do question number three is what are pesticides explain their difference type uh, why persistent pesticides are more lethal for mankind this question uh, is subdivided into three questions so one by one we will discuss it first we discuss its definition pesticides are substances that are meant to control pests and what is pest a pest is an animal or a plant harmful to humans or human concerns in general a pesticide is a chemical or a biological agent such as a virus bacterium antimicrobial or de uh, disinfectant that deters incapacitates kill pests and now come to the what are the types insecticides that kill insects small small insects and the second is herbicide which kills herbs and shrubs and third is rodenticides that kill rats and fungicides that kill fungus as we discussed in the previous slide that uh, rodenticide and here we will discuss that what is rodenticide so rodenticides are chemical made and sold for the purpose of killing rodents while commonly referred as a rat poison rodenticides are also used to kill mice squirrels and woodchucks etc pesticides are poisons and unfortunately unfortunately they can harm more than just the pests at which they are targeted they are toxic and exposure to pesticide can cause a number of health effects they are linked to a range of serious illness and diseases from respiratory problems to cancer land fertility issues also produces when we use uh, pesticides at large scale and frequently used now come to the question number 3 part b what are carbohydrates classify and give details of each class along the examples a carbohydrate is a biomolecule molecules consisting of carbon hydrogen and oxygen atoms usually with a hydrogen oxygen atom ratio of 2 ratio 1 as in water as you see that the formula of water is h2o and where the hydrogen molecules of hydrogen are 2 and the molecules of uh, oxygen is 1 the empirical formula is a general formula uh, for the carbohydrates carbohydrates uh, are the sugars starch and fibers found in the fruits grains vegetables and milk products though often melanite in trendy diets carbohydrates one of the basic food groups are important to health diet the division into four major groups monosaccharides disaccharides oligosaccharides polysaccharides and most of monosaccharides are simple sugar are found in groups other fruits and honey and we will now discuss its examples uh, example of monosaccharide example of disaccharide example of oli oligosaccharides uh, example of uh, polygosaccharides and the last point is the two molecules of a simple sugar that are linked to each other uh, a disaccharide or double sugar the disaccharide sucrose uh, or table sugar consists of the one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose the most familiar so source of sucrose are sugar beets and the cane sugar oligar oligosaccharides consist of 3 to 6 monosaccharide units infrequently found in natural source although a few plant derivatives have been identified polysaccharide where it is present polysaccharide in terms means many sugar represent most of the structural and energy reserves carbohydrates found in nature cellulose the principal structure component of plant is a complex polysaccharide comprising many glucose units linked together now come to question number 3 part c discuss different methods of food preservation now first we discuss what is a food preservation a number of methods by which food is kept from spoilage after harvest or slaughter the oldest method of preservation are drying refrigeration and fermentation and what is fermentation fermentation is controlled decay of mat uh, material using special bacteria which results in a more desirable product refrigeration the life of a many foods may be increased by storage at temperature below 4 centigrade or 40 fahrenheit commonly refrigerated foods includes fresh fruits and vegetables eggs and daily products and meats now freezing and frozen storage provide an excellent means of preserving the nutritional quality of food canning and what is canning technique nicholas apparet a uh, uh, parisian uh, confectioner by trader 
is credited with establishing the heat processing of food as an industry. In 1810, he received official recognition of his process of enclosing food in a bottles, corking the bottles, and placed bottles in boiling water for various period of time. This technique is called canning. Now, pasteurization is the application of heat to a food product in order to destroy pathogenic disease-producing microorganism to inactivate spoilage causing enzymes to reduce or destroy spoilage microorganism the relatively mild heat treatment used in the pasteurization process causes minimal changes in the sensory and nutritional characteristics of food compared to the se severe heat treatment used in the sterilization process now come to the aseptic process the aseptic process involves placing a sterilized product into a sterilized packaging that is then sealed under sterile conditions. It began in 1914 with the development of sterile filtered for use in the wine industry. Dehydration, another process, or dehydration or drying of food has long been practiced commercially in the production of spaghetti and other starch products. Now come to the pickle fruits and vegetables. Fresh fruits and vegetables soften after 24 hours in a watery solution and begins a slow mixed fermentation uh, purification. The addition of salt suppress undesirable microbial activity, creating a favorable environment for the desired fermentation. Most green uh, vegetables and fruit may be preserved by pickling. Another technique is organic chemical preservatives. Sodium benzoate and other benzoate are among the uh, principal chemical preservatives. The use of benzoate in certain product is prescribed quantity, usually not exceeding 0.1% is permitted in most countries, some of which requires a declaration of its use on the label of food uh, container. Where and how fiber optics are used, also write down their advantages and disadvantages. This is also a very important question. Uh, optical fiber used light pulses and instead of electric pulses to transmit information, deliver hundreds of times a higher bandwidth than a traditional electric system. Fiber optics cable can be protected by sheathing and arm to make it resistance to harsh environment and condition. Hence, it is widely adopted in commercial business, government, military and many other industries for voice, video and data transmission. Now come to the point where and when fiber optic cable is used. Now, for the first point is fiber optic cable transmit large amount of data at very high speed. This technology is therefore widely used in internet cables. Network between computers in a single building or across nearby structure is made easier and faster with the use of fiber optic cables. Third point is fiber optic cables are widely used in the fields of medicine and research. Optical communication is an important part of uh, non-intrusive surgical methods popularly known as endoscopy fourth point is fiber optic cable play an important role in the lightning and safety feature of present day automobile automobile they are widely used in the lightning both in the interior and exterior of vehicles now come to the advantages first advantage is long continuous miles of optical fiber cable can be made cheaper than equivalent lengths of copper wire second point is optical fiber is thinner and can be drawn to smaller diameter than copper wire uh, uh, students uh, kindly note the one thing that in engineering signal to noise ratio is very important in communication and uh, signal to noise ratio is uh, higher in copper as compared to optical fiber Third point is because optical fiber are much thinner than copper wire, more fiber can be bundled into a given diameter cable. This allows more phone lines to go over the same cable or more channels to come through the cable into your cable TV box. More advantages are the loss of signal is optical fiber is less than in copper wire. And next is unlike electrical signal transmitted in copper wire, light signals from one fiber do not interfere with those of the other fiber in the same fiber cable. And the last advantage is optical fiber usually have a longer life cycle for over 100 years. Disadvantages are uh, light emitting source are limited to low power. Second is optical fiber is rather fragile and very delicate actually and more vulnerable to damage compared to the copper wire. And the last point is the distance between the transmitter and receiver should be keep short or repeaters are need to boost the signals. Repeaters are used when uh, transmission is uh, connected uh, on a very large scale.
so repeater the basically the purpose of the repeater is to enhance the transmission signal thank you so much i hope you will like it please comment and give me feedback so that i can uh, perform it, this job very efficiently thank you so much and uh, feel free to contact anytime i am able 24 hours to facilitate and guide you thank you so much